Today and next week, we're going to be talking about what people really need. What people really need. Have you ever met someone who just makes bad decisions? If you haven't, maybe you're the one who keeps making the bad decisions, right? (laughs) I put it like this. Have you ever uh, spoken with someone and they keep telling you what they think and what they need, but you know very differently what they need? I live this reality every day, y'all. I got a toddler, Every day, he is trying to convince me that he needs something that he does not need at all, right? Uh, We have gates, we have locks, we have latches all over the house. Literally, all over the house. We take most of our stuff and we stack it as high as we can out of reach. And still, I feel like my catchphrase is, what did you just put in your mouth? I mean, it is every single day. And I'm sure that if he could talk to me, he'd be like, come on, Dad. Like, come on. This isn't that bad for me. It's just a battery. It's a dead battery. I just want to suck on it a little bit. Like, don't even worry about it. It's dog food. The dogs eat it. Like, come on, just let me, let me just chew. I want to be like them, right? He would try and convince me that it's good for him. But we know better, don't we? We do all of this. Because we know what's best for him. But you know, something happens when we grow up. Life can feel so difficult and complicated. And it's no longer like I'm not supposed to put a fork into the light socket. It feels like it's a little bit more gray. I'm told by these people I should worry about money. These people I need to worry about a career. These people tell me I, that I'm getting too old, that I better settle down and get married. And in life, there are tons of things that people will tell you and things that we could think that will make us truly happy. Money, fame, job, a spouse, kids. If only you had these things, then everything would kind of work out. And all these wants come down to we want to feel powerful, we want to feel comfortable, we want to feel affirmed by other people, and we want to feel like we're in some kind of control of our life. However, if you've pursued these things, or you're pursuing these things, maybe you feel like this today. You feel fatigued. You feel anxious. You feel frustrated. Or you just feel discouraged. It could get so bad that you could feel disillusioned about your entire life, can't you? Well, if those things aren't going to do it for me, if those things aren't going to make me happy, and satisfied. What do I really need? What do people really need? What can help set people free from all these issues and give them a new purpose, a new meaning, and a new hope? Well, today, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about what do people really need? And again, we're in the book of Acts. You remember this is part two of a two-part series. Uh, You have the book of Luke. Luke talks all about Jesus, and then he stops. Why? Because he ran out of paper. And so he, literally, that's how it happened. Remember, you have to roll up in scrolls, and he probably filled up an entire scroll. And so to make it to where it's not too heavy to lug around, he starts another scroll. And that's where we see the Acts of Apostles. And where Luke is talking about Jesus, the Acts of the Apostles is talking about the Apostles, the followers of Jesus once he ascends back into heaven. And we have seen some incredible stuff already, haven't we? The, Holy, the promise of the Holy Spirit was there. Then it came. Then Peter gives this sermon. 3,000 people are saved. Then it tells us what those people did. That's what we went over last week. What was the natural next step for these new Christians that didn't have any churches, didn't have any tradition? What did they do? Well, in that, one of the things that it said is, uh, and all came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. So what we're going to see today is one of those uh, signs and wonders that's going to bring all to the people. Here's an example, right? And so let's look at one of those miracles. If you'll, again, if you have your Bible open to Acts chapter 3, let's read. 
It says, now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a man lame from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple that is called the beautiful gate, to ask alms of those entering the temple. Don't worry if all of that sounds confusing to you. We're going to explain what all that means. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms. And Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John, and said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have to give you. In the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and his ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God and recognized him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate of the temple asking for alms. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. The first thing I want you to note is you need to be ready to share. Be ready to share. What are Peter and John doing? Well, they're going up to the temple at the hour of prayer. Well, what is that? Well, there are two times a day that people would go up to the temple. One is about 9 a.m., one's about 3 p.m. They're going to the 3 p.m. one. If you're wondering what that ninth hour means, it's about 3 p.m. Well, why is this important? Well, it shows the disciples are still observant Jews, right? They go to the temple, and we see that in in Acts chapter 2, verse 46, and it said, day by day they attended the temple together. So they're still going to the temple. And it also gives the setting uh, of what's about to take place. Now it shifts our attention from Peter and John just walking into the temple like they would do every single day to this man that we haven't seen before. This is what it has to say about him. A man lame from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called the beautiful gate, to ask for alms of those entering the temple. So as Peter and John are just walking to the temple as they do every day, they see this man who's probably there every day. Well, what does it mean that it's the beautiful gate? Well, okay, so the temple has all these gates around it. Imagine it, it's almost like doors to get in the church, right? We have a couple of different ways that you could get into the church. Well, the, <laughs> the temple's a little bit more intricate than that. Like, it has different courts and different layers. But anyways, for, so you, for you to get into the temple, you had to go through one of these gates. One of these gates is known as the beautiful gate. It was done by King Herod, so it's a newer gate. It's all bronze. So you would look at it and go, wow, that's beautiful. So they nicknamed it the beautiful gate. Not too difficult. But uh, this is really the only time that it really talks about the beautiful gate. Um, but, but you have to think that this has to be a place that people kind of like to go in. People like to go in places that are pretty. And you would think that this would be a busier gate, which makes sense why this man is laid there every single day asking for alms. Well, what in the world are alms? Alms it is, is giving to the poor. This is a very important thing in Judaism. When you see someone who's asking for money, you help them out. That's all alms giving is. So here's a man. He's lame. He cannot walk. Well, how is he supposed to survive? Well, he has to depend on the kindness of others doesn't he and so every day he gets some people to carry him to the gate now i i don't think it said that it was his friends or anything so who knows maybe he has to get enough money to even be carried to and from the gate every day and he sits there all day saying can you please help me please help me Well, was this man really crippled? Because you might think, oh, well, maybe he doesn't really have any problems or maybe he has some other problems. No, like everybody knows who this guy is. Everybody knows who this guy is to the point that everybody knows that he has been crippled since birth. He's never been able to walk. 
Every day he's brought to the gate. Every day he asks for the same thing. Would you give me just a little bit of money so I can make it to the next day? Well, he does it this day. And Peter and John happen to be walking past him. It is possible that Peter and John have walked past him before. It is possible that they have done this multiple times. We we don't know. It doesn't tell us. This could be right after the Holy Spirit comes. It could be quite a bit later. But something about this day, he was sitting by the gate, and he asked for alms. And Peter and John decide that they need to stop what they're doing, and they need to speak to this man. And they do this in a pretty emphatic way, don't they? Both of them go, look at me. Look at me. I don't want to just drop money into your hat or whatever else you have out there. I, I don't want to just give you money that you've been asking for. I want you to look at me. And so what does the man do? He looks at Peter expectantly. Well, what does this look like in our lives? When people come looking for help, we take time. The greatest thing that we could offer people is not just a quick buck. It's not a quick fix. It is giving people our time. When people come to look for us for help, We need to be available for people to come and tell you their problems. Be available to bear one another's burdens. And be proactive, proactive in helping people that you see that are struggling. Now, a lot of you, your minds are going to immediately go to the homeless that we have in this city. And man, if you have a heart for that, God bless you. They need your help. But this is more broad than people who are in deep, deep need. When I'm talking about be available for people to tell you their problems and be proactive in helping people, I mean be proactive in people at the church who you see that are struggling, people at work who you know are going through a hard time, whether that's a bad divorce or whether that's many, many other issues that could be going on there. I mean, be proactive in helping your neighbors. Be proactive in helping the people around you. Give them your time. That's the greatest thing that you could do for them. Now, let me tell you what this does not look like, okay? Do not go to lunch and then not give a waiter a tip, and instead you give them a gospel track. That helps stinking nobody. You've given them no time. You've also given them nothing that they need. So you have just wasted both your time, or their time and your time, and a plenty good gospel track. This does not look like for someone begging for money, you go, here's the Bible, and then you leave them, right? No, we are wanting to bless people. This looks like we do our best to give people exactly what they need, but then point people towards Jesus. How are you using what the Lord has given you to not only help, but point to something greater? The second thing I want you to note is not only do I want you to be ready to share, but I want you to see that this man goes from lame to leaping. From lame to leaping. This man is lame. What does he really need? What does he really need? It'd be great if he could walk, right? Then he wouldn't have to sit out in front of the gate. He could go and, and, and make money other ways. 
He, he could go and actually live the life that he's always dreamed of. You can only imagine him, even as a kid, looking at the other kids running around, and he has to sit inside, and he has to walk for, watch from afar. How many people would not have relationships with this man? How ostracized would this man be for his whole life because of this disfigurement? What he needs is not another buck to get by for another day. He needs to be able to walk. Day after day, year after year, this man has asked for money. But where did it go? Money might have given him his fix for a day, but the next day he's in the same position that he was before. Asking for money, that's not what he needed. So what does Peter do? He addresses exactly what the man was asking for. He says, I have no silver and gold. Now can you imagine this? You are sitting there asking for help like you do every day, how humbling, how embarrassing that can be. And these two guys come back and they go, look at me. And you go, oh man, this is going to be good. And then Peter says, I don't have any money. You would think, well, thanks for nothing, bucko, right? <laughs> like, then why are you wasting my time? I could still be asking other people, but now you've surrounded me. You're wasting my time and your time. You don't have any money. Okay. But the man didn't really need money. He needed to walk. And so Peter knows what this man needs and says, but I, what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. This man has never walked. Never in his whole life. You can imagine that the thought that anyone could ever fix this issue seems so far off and so foreign to him. You know, I don't even know if this man ever even asked somebody, could you help me to walk? It's just been made impossible. Now he looks to try to collect what he can and get by, but Peter is going to give him the freedom that he has never experienced and Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up and immediately to his feet and his ankles were made strong and leaping up he stood and began to walk and enter the temple with them walking and leaping and praising God well I, you can imagine how people are going to react to this right and says and all the people saw him walking and praising God and recognized him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate of the temple and asking for alms and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what happened to him The man was lame, and he went to leaping. Well, what changed? God gave him exactly what he really needed. What do people really need? People really need Jesus. In fact, this is why it's a two-parter. I didn't want to keep you guys for uh, what was going to be over an hour speaking on this. And we're going to see next week how Jesus Christ is really what people need. Peter's actually going to address that. But people need Jesus. That's what they need. That's what gives them freedom. The ability to do what God had always had planned for them. To stop being lame and sitting on the sidelines not knowing, not having any hope, but to be made free, to be changed back into what God had prepared for them, and then to live a life for God. Well, how do I give people the gift of Jesus Christ? Simple. Tell them your testimony. Tell people about Jesus, and tell people what Jesus has done for you. Why is this important, Brant? Well, on the large scope, did you know that every revival throughout history, every revival starts with one person? In many of the more modern revivals, we could actually point out who that person was that was radically saved. Or who that person was that spoke, that moved in such a way. It, revival always starts with one person being radically changed. And, and look, we've seen that here, right? 
I remember for the first couple of years, we really didn't have to fill up the baptismal. Now I pretty much keep it up. We never hardly had visitors that stayed. Now we can look around and we can see that there's young people that call this their family. We never have many of the things that, are now, that we are now coming to expect Sunday in and Sunday out. Why? Because when we see God move in one person's life, it gains the attention and the amazement of those around it. You know, in church, we want to be able to fill everybody's need, right? We want to make sure that every program, we have every resource and everything that everyone is looking for. But we cannot lose focus on what people really need. They need Jesus. How are you giving Jesus to people around you who need him so desperately? Guys, I've said this before. I, I don't ask you to invite people to church. I don't ask you to share your testimony just so everybody goes, wow, look how great Brant's doing. I don't care. I don't do it to, to try and get more tithing. We, we stay pretty close to a budget. We don't go crazy. I ask you to do this because there are people around you who need Jesus. Not just want them, not just that that would sound good. Not, in fact, many people who need Jesus who would say, well, I don't feel like I need Jesus. But there is no hope for them if you do not share. Let me say that again so it really convicts some hearts and minds. There is no hope for them if you do not share. And you go, I don't know what to tell them. Have you ever experienced a miracle? Have you ever experienced God's love? Have you ever experienced anything <laughs> when it comes to do with God? Tell them about it. One thing that we're going to see next week is all of this miracle happens, not just so this man can walk. Now, that's great. That's life-changing stuff. And if we started having people who were lame since birth starting to walk around here, we would go, whoa, look at what God's doing. This is unbelievable. But all of this happened so that Peter could have the attention of everyone else around to then tell them about Jesus. You want to know the purpose of the miracles in your life? You want to know the purpose of God showing up and providing for you and protecting you and giving you joy when you shouldn't have it, peace when you shouldn't have it. Love when you feel so alone. You want to know one of the main purposes for that? So that you could tell other people about it. Say, look at what happened. The same God who did this for me could do this to you. The same God who provided, the same God who loved, the same God who took care of me is the same God that wants to love, protect, and take care of you. All of this was so that Peter can talk about what we're going to look at next week. And that is so that he can share Jesus Christ and give people what they really need. This is what I want you to take home. I know that this is a short message, but I hope that it is pointed. I hope that it is convicting. It's very straightforward. People need Jesus. People need Jesus. What are you going to do about it? My challenge to you, I've given this challenge a couple of times. Just invite somebody to church. That's an easy place to start. I've been encouraging people to tell testimonies, so if you want your friend to hear a testimony, we should have a Sunday where they could hear a testimony. 
if you're too scared, if, if God's still working on you and working hard, whatever it is, bring them to a place that's not scared. Bring them to a place that wants to tell them about Jesus. But my hopes is that you would be encouraged by inviting your friends so that you would share your testimony, so you would share the good news about Jesus Christ, so that you would give people what they really need. Jesus knew what we needed. Jesus, who created the whole world, saw us in our sin and our separation from God. He says, I know what they need. They need me. So he came down from his glory from heaven to be fully God, fully man, born of a virgin, and he lived a sinless life. And he died on a cross taking on your sin, the thing that separates you from God, and your shame. He took it on himself. And three days later, he rose from the grave victorious so that we could be sure that whoever believes in Jesus will not perish, but they will have everlasting eternal life. That the people who believe in Jesus will be filled with the Holy Spirit that will equip them to be witnesses, which we've been called to be, and that every promise of God will become our own. Don't you want to give that gift to somebody today? Don't you want somebody to be set free and go from lame to leaping, hopeless to hopeful, lonely to love? Not only is it logical to do, not only is it loving to do, it's what you've been called to do. It is your purpose to do it. If you have a testimony, share it. If you have friends around you who you know don't attend a church, or maybe you don't even know if they attend a church or not, invite them. Because what people really need is not the right political party to win. What people really need is not, has nothing to do with gun control. What people really need has nothing to do with social media or jobs or homelessness or any of the other issues that we think through and see on the news day in and day out. What people really need is Jesus. How are you leading people to them? Let's pray.